I've recently noticed a tremendous amount of pilots of all levels who have struggled a ton when talking on the radio. So in today's video, we're going to dive a little deeper into ATC communication and break down one of my flights for you. There's just something different about aviation. My name's Luke, and on this channel, you can watch me grow from student to professional pilot. Adventure is in aviation. So we're going to look at a few times that I was talking to a controller at a Class Delta controlled airport. And this flight specifically, I was going up to do some solo maneuvers in the practice area, or in this case, what you'll see coming up is I went and I navigated to the VOR, and then I did my maneuvers in the vicinity of the Binghamton VOR. So let's listen to that clip, and then I'll talk a little bit about how I talk to a controller and about how the majority of pilots should be talking to controllers. Binghamton ground, hello again. Skyhawk 7395 Delta is on the west ramp with India. We'd like to go to the vicinity of the Binghamton VOR at 4,500. We're ready to taxi. Customer 7395 Delta, Binghamton ground, runway 16, taxi via Bravo Foxtrot Alpha. 16 Bravo Foxtrot Alpha, 905 Delta. So as you just heard, he gave me the taxiways and the runway that I'm going to. You just repeat back exactly what he says. This is just another thing. It sounds like common sense. Just say back what he says. But so many people struggle with it. And you really just got to nail, nail, nail that into your brain that... It's not that big of a deal. And everybody makes mistakes. Are you kidding me? You know, you might get in an airplane with a very experienced instructor who is a Delta retiree and has 40,000 hours, and they're still going to make mistakes on the radio. It happens to everybody, and controllers make mistakes too. Don't, they might sound intimidating at first, but they make just as many mistakes as pilots. Everybody's human. Everybody reads back something incorrect every now and again. And that's okay. Now, if you're a new student pilot who maybe has started to learn how to fly in an uncontrolled airport, then you probably haven't talked to a controller yet. And you may be really overwhelmed and anxious about doing so. But I am here to tell you that it is not that scary. So many people get freaked out. And once they have a mic in front of their face, they don't know what to say. And the most important thing that you need to keep in mind is you're talking to another person. It's another human on the other side of that microphone. And you guys just think of it like a conversation. You're just talking in a little bit more complicated language. Something you'll hear many instructors say is your three W's. Now what this stands for is who you are, where you are, and what do you want to do. So the who you are is, of course, your call sign. In this case, you can hear my call sign is Skyhawk 7395 Delta. Your next W, where you are, as you heard in the clip, I said 7395 Delta is on the west ramp. I then proceeded to say what ATIS information I have because periodically the controller will update the ATIS and that's what tells pilots the current field conditions for that airport. And the last W, what you want to do, in this case, like I previously said in this video, I said I would like to go to the vicinity of the Binghamton VOR, I'd like to go there at this altitude, and I'm going to do maneuvers when I get there. The controller heard that, knew that that was my intention, and passed it along to all the controllers that I would talk to. Now, I by no means am a CFI. And by no means should you take my content as instructional content, but rather maybe see another person's perspective. Something that I've noticed as a YouTuber, as a student pilot, especially on YouTube, is the amount of bad habits that people get when they're talking on the radio. And for me, any bad habit that I've prevented myself from getting into when speaking to a controller has come from YouTube. Just a quick example, 7 Gear Kelsey, he has a great channel and he made a video similar to this on how to and how to not talk to an air traffic controller. And one thing that he mentioned was a bad habit he was in was referring to the transponder as the box. And what he said was, you know, he gave read back his squat code and then he said in the box. And, you know, the majority of controllers in the United States are going to understand what that means. But if, you know, you go to a foreign country, they might not know what you're talking about. 
So there's certain things that are right and there's certain things that are wrong. You are responsible for being the best pilot that you can be. Now I understand what you might be saying. Well, you know, Luke, it's easy for you to say because you feel comfortable talking to a controller and you don't really understand what it's like to feel uncomfortable. And that's totally true. But I have a few tips uh, because believe it or not, I have felt uncomfortable in certain situations and as will you and as will every student pilot who learns how to fly. And my biggest tip to you is to practice. Just like everything else you do, the more you do it, the better you get at it. And I stressed, have stressed this in recent videos, which is listen to air traffic control. If you listen and you expect to hear something and you know what the controller is gonna say, it's gonna make life so much easier. If you just throw on a busy airport, like JFK or Los Angeles or anywhere, anywhere that has a lot of traffic, you can hear the best people in the industry talk on the radio. If you think the Delta guys are the best talking at the radio, go, go and listen to Atlanta. If you think the corporate guys are best, go listen to Teterboro. I mean, you know, that's just a silly example, but listen to as much air traffic control as you can. Listen to what pilots say and criticize them. Say, mm, I don't like that. I don't like how they said that, but oh, I like how they said that. And controllers, controllers will get picky about it too. I've heard controllers say, hey, please keep it professional or, you know, please keep the standard uh, terms in use. And that's okay and that's normal. That may happen in a high volume airport. Another tip that I would give to you as a student pilot is to always have a pen in your hand when you're talking to a ground controller. Preferably always have a pen in your hand when you're flying. Maybe in your hand is an exaggeration, but always have a pen within hand's reach. You know, if you got it laying down next to your knee pad or your iPad, whatever it may be, you need to be able to write things down in case a controller relays information to you that you may not be able to memorize. A perfect example of this is when you call up ground control and they give you taxi instructions. Maybe a taxiway is closed and they're gonna give you a weird taxi that you've never done before and you don't wanna mess that up. You know, that's a silly mistake to make. So an easy way to prevent that from ever happening is to just write it down. Unfortunately, that is all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know by clicking that like button down below. And if you want to see more content like this, then be sure to click that subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you never miss another video. Until next week, I want you to stay current, stay proficient, and keep the blue side up. Fly safe, everybody. We'll see you in the next video. Yeah, flying. You know I've been flying. I've been in the sky, touching clouds, ain't denying. Swap my trim, I keep on climbing Straight to the top, I've been on my way This ain't nothing new